What's up, Body Rate Warriors, and welcome back to another video. Another follow along today, we're going to be checking out ankle flexibility. This is a nice little quick warm up routine, perhaps if you're doing some squatting or something else that demands ankle flexibility uh, for you to add in there. As always, the offline version of this routine will be available in a link in the description down below, as well as the link to my app, Tribe, which you can grab workouts for handstand strength and flexibility and more. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this routine. So you will need some equipment today. Um, you will need a stick, a stick of torture, and um, you will need a weight. I've got an eight kilogram kettlebell, but about eight to 10 kilos would be useful. Doesn't need to be kettlebell shaped, but um, a weight is needed. Otherwise, we probably should be good for the rest of the routine. Right, so let's kick things off and we're gonna start by assessing. We need to do a little test because if we're not assessing, then we're guessing. Let's have a look and see how we actually make improvements in this particular session. So today, uh, I just want you to grab a wall and you're gonna just test what your current ankle range of motion is. So I'm gonna try and basically see how far away from the wall I can get. I can touch my knee, but this heel can't be lifting. So here I've got a little bit of heel lift. So I move a little bit closer, right there. That's probably about the maximum. So I'm gonna measure that gap for the sake of convenience. I'm gonna measure it with my hand. It's about hand and a, and a thumb sort of distance away. And then we're gonna come back to that point and test afterwards. You can obviously measure on each side as well because uh, side to side differences aren't uncommon when it comes to the ankles and flexibility in general. So measure each side, pause the video if you need to, and then we can come back and we can begin with the flexibility side of things, which you're gonna need the stick of suffering for. And we're actually gonna start off today with something um, that I discovered from Kit Lachlan. So it's his stick drill for the calf uh, and also, to be honest, ankle flex, um, hamstring myofascial release. So this is a soft tissue technique. We're gonna get the stick in this kneeling position and we're gonna place it as close as we can behind the knee. Very simply from here, you know, sit back and then try and put as much weight as, as you need to on the back of the knees. So if you can't quite, you know, if it's too uncomfortable to put all your weight there, use your hands to assist. If it's uncomfortable underneath the, the, the toe, so in this plantar flex position, you can place like a cushion right underneath the top of the ankles here. That's gonna help support it. So it's a little bit more comfortable to sit in this, uh, this kneeling position. Very simply, we're gonna do two minutes. We're gonna sit with this stick and over that two minute period, we're gonna work the stick towards the base of the calf. Now we don't gonna go all the way down to the ankle. We're just gonna go to about probably two thirds of the way down the calf itself. So we sat here for a sort of 10 seconds, we're just gonna roll it very slightly, sit back on it, and we're gonna work our way down. Now this one, this might be uncomfortable. That might be uncomfortable, and that is good. And that is good, there is good evidence to suggest that doing some foam rolling, some, some myofascial work can aid in flexibility, certainly in the short term. So we're gonna utilize it to make our subsequent training, so the session that we're about to do, to focus on ankle flexibility, we're gonna make it a little bit easier by doing something that hurts comparatively more to begin with. So we've done almost a minute now. So I just wanna keep every sort of 20 seconds, just try to keep rolling that stick all the way down. If you come across any sort of quote unquote trigger points, any points of discomfort, um, feel free to pause on those points for a bit longer. Um, personally, mine gets more uncomfortable the closer I get to the base of the calf, but it's gonna vary depending on the individual. About one minute 20 or so. So almost, almost there. And then we can start jumping into the exercises themselves. Try to roll again, go a little bit further down. These ones are never particularly fun, but short-term pain for long-term gain, right? <laughs> Keep going, we're almost there, another sort of 10 seconds or so, and we have done the first couple of minutes, and then we can jump into some of the actual exercises. So last little couple of twists. And then if you wanna spend some more time in this one, two to three minutes is probably about right. Um, it's a good one just for 
kind of releasing. It, it, as I said, it works both on the calf and also the hamstring as well. So let's put that stick to one side. And what we can do is shake that off a bit and come forward into just an upward dog position. It's gonna relax the lower body a bit, let the, uh, the spine extend. And then we're gonna press back up into our upward, our downward dog even. And then from here, I just want us to start doing a couple of walks. Now, the shoulders aren't a big focus today. So if you need to make sure those heels can touch the ground. So if that means coming up a little bit with the shoulders and just doing those walks at a little bit higher so you can actually do that. And when we do the walks, we can do a little bit of a knee bend. And we're just gonna do about 20 reps back and forth. So just kind of easing our way into this one. This one here, you're gonna feel stretch probably in the calf, but predominantly in the hamstring as well. Right, so we're gonna pause and then walk ourselves up a little bit further. And we're gonna just shift over onto just the one leg only. And we're gonna try and shift our weight forward. So we bring a point of stretch over the calf. Now I'm gonna use my second leg to kind of press down a little bit on the heel to so make sure the heel's staying. And I'm gonna to try and lean forward so I feel a point of stretch over the calf. Now the more I try to stick my butt out here, the more this is gonna bring a stretch over the hamstring as well. So just try to focus on the weight, feeling over that calf, trying to shift that knee further forward. Alternatively, you can do this standing with the heel dropping on an elevated surface. I keep holding just for another 10 seconds here on this side. And then we're just gonna swap sides, switch to that left hand side. Again, use that second leg, the right leg this time. You're gonna know, try and keep pressing down on that heel. And then we're just gonna try and pull as far forward as we can with that knee, feeling a good stretch in the calf. Again, just like position your hands and shoulders at a point at which you're able to get as much weight going through that heel. So the heel stays down, but we get that shift forward and we can get a stretch over that calf. If you need to elevate them on something, just do that. Or as I said, just do the standing version of this. Ten seconds here. Right, and that is that side done. <laughs> and we can come forward just into a little bit of a, a seated position here. So one of the, the more important aspects of developing ankle flexibility is understanding how to contract the anterior tibialis, the closing side of the joint of the ankle. So to do that, we can, we can try and feel out this notion of basically trying to pull the toes back towards our knees. To help with this, we can think about additionally contracting the quad. So we try to feel all of this front of the shin pulling back, but really focusing here. I'm gonna try and think about pulling my toes back as far as I can. Once you kind of got that one figured out, you can try and do that more in a bent leg position. So flexing the knees to sort of like 30, 40 degrees, and then doing the same thing again, feeling that movement going from pointing to pulling back with the toes. Okay, so once you get a better idea of how this feels and what we're trying to feel, the sensation we're trying to feel from going from almost like big toe, toes pulling back, so using the top of the foot as well as this point, we're gonna take that contraction to something that's more relevant for our squat, for example. So this is where that weight comes into play. We're gonna come into a kneeling position here we do something called a fisherman's calf stretch. So we're just gonna to come to a point in which we can get a good amount of dorsiflexion or kind of our max dorsiflexion so we notice our heel isn't lifting and we place the weight onto the edge. If you can't get past the toes here, I would actually say that a slight elevation of the heel is good because it allows you to get further over and then you can then get more of an advantageous effect of gravity to help with the stretch. So anyway. Get to the point, we're gonna pull ourselves into a point of stretch, kind of 
close to our max effort. And then we're gonna try and repeat that contraction. So we're gonna try and think, I'm gonna try and think about lifting my toes up, lifting the top of my foot up towards my shin. I should feel this contraction in the front of the shin. I'm gonna hold that for 10 seconds. So if we started a few seconds ago, we're gonna keep going for another five seconds. Keep trying to lift this front of the foot up for three, two, one, and then relax. And I'm gonna try and push my knee further forward. Each time we do this contraction, we're gonna do another two on this side. We're gonna focus on trying to, trying to actually actively move deeper into the stretch. So again, let's do another contraction. You're gonna try and lift that top of the foot up, contract the front of the shin, contract the top of the foot, pull the toes up towards the knee. Keep going, keep lifting. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax, try and shift that knee slightly forward. I'm gonna do one more. So lift those toes, contract the front of the shin. Five, actually that's definitely not, getting a bit ahead of myself. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax, try and go a bit deeper. We're just gonna hold this deepest position now for about 10 seconds. So it should be feeling like a good stretch in the back of the ankle. shift back out of that one. Very simply, we're just gonna swap sides here. So I'm gonna place my left leg forward, place my right leg back. Again, I'm gonna go push that knee right over this toe. So find a point of stretch. And then from here, I'm gonna try and do that contraction. I'm gonna do three reps, 10 seconds. So I'm gonna try it and lift up the front of the foot. I'm gonna keep going, keep lifting. Five, four, Three, two, one. Relax, try to shift a bit further over. Remember trying to shift deeper on each rep. Let's lift again. Lift really, really hard. Think about pulling those feet up towards the shin. Maximum effort here. Four, three, two, one. Relax, shift a little bit further, and we do one last one. So lift, keep lifting, maximum effort, really focus, top of the foot, pull the toe up, lift that big toe up. You can't quite get the contraction, just come a little bit further out of the stretch until you're able to do it. Two, one, relax, go deeper. We're gonna spend 10 seconds in this position, this final deepest position. And we can just put that to one side. Come back to that sitting position. We can just do some foot circles here, kind of relax a little bit. Gets quite tight in terms of where we're doing that contraction. Um, just do some foot circles, let things relax. And then we can come into a squat. Now, this one here, I would actually recommend having some assistance. So I'm gonna use this post. You can use like edge of a sofa, really anything that you have just to hold you in a point of squat. And you're gonna try and sit in your squat nice and upright, pushing the knees over the toes, a comfortable squat position. From here, we're gonna do a calf raise. I'm gonna try and lift onto the balls of my feet. And then as I lower, I'm gonna try and lower, but press my knees forward. So I'm using that maximum level of dorsiflexion. So lower nice and under control. Just trying to, again, stay upright with the torso and forward with the knees. We only six to eight of these, but we're gonna try and use the ankle range of motion. So lower down nice and slowly, trying to basically think again about pulling those feet up towards the shin, but making sure we can touch down the heel in that bottom position. So we're gonna do one more for luck. And in this final one, I just want you to sit forward and I want you to use the support in front of you just to pull yourself further forward. You can wedge the elbows on the inside of the leg. So you're pushing the knees out, but really think about shifting forward, but no further than that heel begins to lift. And we're just gonna spend a little bit of time, just another 10 seconds in this stretch position. All 
All right, we're gonna come back into that sitting position. We can relax things a little bit. It might feel a little bit tense over the front of the shin. So again, just doing some circles with the feet, just letting that bit stretch out. And then very simply, let's retest that ankle range of motion on that same post. How far can you get away of still touching the knee and keeping the heel in contact? So for myself personally, I think I've probably gained, that's quite a bit actually, regained a few centimeters. That was the original one. Very comfortably touched there. So I can probably get, I've got another centimeter or so of dorsiflexion there. And to be honest with you, I've got a pretty good level of dorsiflexion. It's not been something that I've struggled with. Um, not something I need to improve. So one centimeter there, you may find that you've gained a few centimeters, you may not. Um, you're more than welcome. If you wanted to do this, I'd repeat that round. So using the kettlebell, the squat lifts, do that again and then see how it is. I would love to hear how you got on with this particular one. Did it improve your ankle range of motion, your dorsiflexion? Did it make your squatting feel easier? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want a full version of this routine or a full routine, then I will link down below to my tight ankles video that kind of details a little bit more about this so you can hopefully help out your training there. If it did help you out, you can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button as well if you want to join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe and don't miss out any more future videos. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week.